Hey Jen, I really like your hair. Thanks, Becky. I think the curls are awesome. Black hair's the best. Ah! Can you not do that? It's kind of inappropriate. What? Why? Well, it's kind of racist. You're probably wondering, what went wrong in this workplace interaction between Becky and Jen? Unless you have a keen understanding of racial discrimination in today's workforce, you probably didn't notice that something very offensive has taken place. Jen called Becky the R word, causing Becky to feel shame and sadness. How can we avoid situations like this? Workplace discrimination is a very serious issue, and we have to be sensitive to our employees' different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. And just as it's important to be sensitive to our black, Arab, and other non-white co-workers, it's also equally important to be sensitive to our white co-workers' sensitivity to that sensitivity. Can you believe that Trump wants to build a wall? I mean, I must really bother you as a Mexican. Actually, I am Bolivian. How dare you? I went to Berkeley. Berkeley! Sometimes racial discrimination in the workplace can happen unintentionally. Take for instance this scene where Marco accidentally angered Tom by correcting him. Marco may not be Mexican, but correcting Tom in that manner made Tom confused, scared, and hostile. This situation could have been avoided altogether. Let's see how. Can you believe Trump wants to build a wall? I mean, that must really bother you as a Mexican. Um, yeah. I love Mexicans. They're so hardworking. Yeah, they, I mean, yes, we are, we are great. Viva la Mexico! <laughs> Go! Crisis averted. Every day we learn more about how people of color live with histories of oppression. And every day, we forget about those who also live with those histories, the oppressors. You see, the average person of color has spent years developing a thick skin when it comes to systemic racial oppression, while the average white person can go through many of their formative years without ever having to think about race. So hearing about racism can be traumatic for your white coworkers and create a negative work environment. White privilege might seem like everything is easier all the time, and it is. But it can also be hard, because feelings are hard. Yes, I just got the raise. 30 bucks an hour. Let's celebrate after work. That's great. 30 bucks. Congratulations. Oh my god. Denise just got a raise and told Jane about it in celebration. But what Denise doesn't know is Jane is actually earning far more for the same job, and now she feels guilty about it. If Denise had just kept her new income to herself, this whole situation could have been avoided. Yes, I just got the raise. Let's celebrate after work. Drinks are on you. Of course. <laughs> Being sensitive to white fragility is difficult, which is why we've devised a simple system to help you foster a non-hostile work environment for your white employees and co-workers. Stop, ignore, listen, empathize, never complain, and eat. Or as we like to call it, the silence system. Here, let's watch what happens when silence is put into action. So I'm not racist. Stop. Like, I voted for Obama. Ignore. Like, I understand the reason for the Black Lives Matter movement. Listen. But it's just like, all lives do matter. Empathize. I just feel like race really isn't relevant in America anymore. Never complain. You're really easy to talk to, Adrian. And eat. That's right. Excellent! Adrian was able to defuse a potentially hostile work situation by using silence. Great work, Adrian. America is a beautiful country built on some ugly things. Things that just don't belong in the workplace. And in order to remain productive, we must all pitch in to protect our most powerful and most fragile. Because when silence works, everyone works. So let's all be sensitive. White sensitive.